Good morning friends. Welcome to our video lecture on fabrication and processing of advanced composites. This particular lecture is focused on mechanics of sandwich composites. So in this lecture we will look into how to find the minimum weight configuration for a given stiffness of a sandwich composite, strength of a sandwich composite and failure modes of a sandwich composite. So minimum weight for a given stiffness. So what is given? The face and core materials are already given. So what is face and what is core we have already seen in previous lectures. If we are considering a sandwich composite beam, then we are also being provided with the beam length, width and loading configuration. So I have written something B1 and B2. What are they? They are just constants which is specific to loading configuration. Say for example, we are looking into a maximum deflection of a cantilever beam. We know it is PL cube by 3 EI or if we are looking at simply supported beam, we know it is PL cube upon 48 EI. So these numbers 3, 48 and some little bit of rearrangement will give you the constants B1 and B2. Now what do we have to find? We have to find the core thickness which is C, face thickness T, core density rho C for minimum weight. Now when we mention this minimum weight, certainly this design problem will have an objective function. What is an objective function? This is the objective function down here. Okay, so the total weight will be nothing but the weight of the core plus weight of both the faces at the top and at the bottom. That is why the term 2 is here. You have rho f, that is the phase density, the acceleration due to gravity, weight, then t is the uh, thickness of the face, l is the length. In both the cases, l is same because the core length as well as the face length, they are equal and rho c this is your core density now coming to how you would be solving this particular problem so objective function we have already seen then we have to solve for the stiffness equation how do we get the stiffness equation we have already just discussed how we will find out the maximum deflection if we rearrange it and make it p over delta that is nothing but the stiffness equation so we solve the stiffness equation for this rho c so that we again substitute rho c back here where this p delta all the terms will come into picture. Once the objective function is ready then we partially differentiate objective function with respect to the core thickness as well as with respect to the face thickness so that we get the optimal uh, face thickness as well as optimal core thickness. Now once we get both the optimal core and optimal phase thickness, if you put it back, you will get the minimum weight, what we are going to design. If you put it in the stiffness equation, you will get the optimal core density. Now these are some of the equations that will be, uh, uh, you, you will reach upon derivation from the last two, uh, last two equations on weight and stiffness uh, balance. And finally, this is the criteria. Now strength of sandwich beams. There are two types of stresses in sandwich beams. There's a normal stress and the shear stress. Okay, so what is a normal stress? We have already come across this in strength of materials. So sigma f that is the strength on the face or the normal stress on the face is nothing but m that is the bending moment y that is distance from the neutral axis m y divided by e i equivalent times the phase elastic modulus. Now if you closely look into this part, it is nothing, simply you are using a linear model to find out what would be the phase strength from the equivalent strength of the equivalent bending strength of the sandwich beams. Okay. Now y is c by 2 because c is the thickness of the core and if you rearrange and can, the equal terms get cancelled and EF, EF cancels. So finally, so EF, EF cancels, then C cancels 1, C, 2, 2 cancels and you are left out with this M upon BTC. This is for the normal stress of a phase. If you want to find out the normal stress on the core, what do you find? Same expression, only this EF term is replaced with EC. And again you do the cancellation and you will be left out with this block okay now since the elastic modulus of the core is very very less 
is much much less compared to the face so what happens this term comes down so if this term comes down so sigma c is obviously much much less compared to your sigma f that means the faces the top and the bottom faces carry the maximum of the normal stresses in case of a sandwich beam okay now for a beam with concentrated load p maximum bending moment will be pl by b3 some constant so how do you know what would be the constant you have already done that so three point bend this becomes four for cantilever this becomes one so pl upon four or just pl that's the maximum bending moment okay so if we incorporate this b3 back here so what do we get the normal stress in case of a phase takes this particular relation pl upon b3 btc now what about the shear stresses shear stress is largely taken by the core we have already seen so this shear stress vary parabolically through the core okay but if the elastic modulus of the phase is much much higher than the core and c is much much higher than t then the shear stress takes this particular form so what is c c is the core thickness so obviously we know that the core thickness is much much higher compared to the face thickness then the maximum shear stress will be this one see in this term there is no dependence on the face thickness that is why the core largely takes the shear stress okay now coming to what are the different failure modes of a sandwich beam so what do we see here we see a sandwich beam and the top this is t is for the face and c is for the core thickness l is the length and there is a p load in the middle and this is simply supported okay this is simply supported without a roller end as we can see so during tension what we see is there is an yielding at the face there could be face wrinkling another mode is where the core fails okay just the failure of the core the shear failure of the core uh, another one the last one so this is one two three and four this is debonding or where the bond between the face and the core fails okay so face yielding face wrinkling core failure and bond failure now coming back to the failure modes once again so the face can yield compressive force can buckle locally and hence wrinkling takes place what we call as face wrinkling so face yielding can take place and face wrinkling can also take place so what happens to the core the core can fail in shear the core core can have debonding the core can have indentation okay so in case of face yielding this expression we have already seen if this normal stress is equals to the yield strength of the face there will be face yielding okay so obviously you do not want to yield due to the normal stress so that that means the normal stress has to be within the design limit of the ill strength of the face material then face wrinkling when local compressive stress in face is equals to local is equal to local buckling stress okay what is it so in case of face wrinkling this is an expression buckling on an elastic foundation so what do we see here ec is again we can relate ec that's the core of the elastic uh, the elastic modulus of the core we can represent it in terms of the solid the equivalent solid and we can say that the sigma buckling just putting back this expression here the sigma buckling is this now wrinkling will occur when the sigma a this we have already seen becomes equals to this okay so that is the 
stage that is the transition where wrinkling will occur when sigma f becomes equals to the uh, this side the right hand side now coming to the coarse shear so we have seen phase yielding we have seen phase wrinkling and now coarse shear so coarse shear means the shear strength of the core should also be equal to some sort of limiting shear strength of the core then only core will shear okay so tau c equals to b4 p by b4 bc and there is another expression similar which includes the shear strength of the material yield shear strength of the material okay now we have shown here a failure map and you need to reproduce this as a homework so that you can understand the entire picture so what is it using this failure map we can decide whether what would be the uh, design of the panel whether the panel is going to yield wrinkle at the face or there would be shear at the core okay so we see there are three lines right l1 l2 and l3 so what is there so l1 above l1 there is face yielding below l1 that is face wrinkling at an angle above L3, there is phase wrinkling. Below L3, there is coarse shear. Similarly, above L2, that is phase yield. Below L2, there is coarse shear. Now, what this inclination, this angle and everything, how is it drawn? On the y-axis, we have core relative density. What is it? It is the core density over the solid density. And on the x-axis, we have phase, this would be thickness. So face thickness over span length. So that means as we go from left to right in the x-axis, so what happens? This number gradually increases. This number gradually increases. That is T gradually increases. That means the thickness of the face gradually increases. As the thickness of the face gradually increases, so there is more and more chance of having face yielding on this side or core shear depending on what is the relative density of the core. So if the relative density of the core is above certain value, then we find only face yielding. If the core relative density is below certain value, we find core shear. Okay. And that means at, along this line, there is a coexistence of two failure modes like face yield as well as coarse shear is coexisting in this line L2. Similarly for L1, face yield and face fresh wrinkle coexist. But what happens here? In this transition, all three may occur. And then which one we will say dominates? The one that happens at the lowest load is the dominating mechanism. This particular plot assumes a three-point bend of a sandwich composite which is made by aluminium face and rigid polyurethane foam. Okay, these are the values of B3 and B4. Now, the dominant failure mode occurs at lowest load. We have already said, how does the failure mode depend on beam design? Of course, it is important how you are loading the beam whether you are looking at three-point bending, whether you are looking at cantilever, how you are positioning the beam, all those are important. So look at the transition from one failure mode to another. So this is, you see the transition, you see the transition. Okay. Now at transition, two failure modes may coexist. We have already seen in the previous slide. So face yielding load, PFY is this. Say it is equation A. Then uh, face wrinkling load. This is the expression. Okay. This is equation B. Now you can see that in all these two cases, the T bar T upon L that is linearly dependent on the face wrinkling and face yielding load. Now finally, the coarse shear load. This is say expression C. So at L1, we have already seen A and B coexist. At L2, 
AC coexists and L3 B and C that is phase twinkling and coarse shear coexists. Thank you.